would like to thank all my to thank all my for giving me this chance and uh, whatever i'll be sharing is from my past fellowships training in india and abroad and what i'll try to focus is what we need to learn from the so called west and we can use it for our advantage today so what is an ideal process it's not something which looks normal but it should also look symmetrical and it should merge well with the entire face and not really attract any undue attention look at this guy he was here some time ago what do you think is wrong with him good you get a chocolate for that because paper so uh, what i mean to stress is eyebrows make a difference it's not just the eyes this case presented as a road traffic accident she has trauma and ophthalmos but what else does she need to be taken care of apart from the socket and the prosthetic eye to reach this ideal situation and this is just like i've just copied pasted the other side so she has issues she has a discontinuous eyebrow there's a lot of scar tissue the lids are dysmorphic and of course she also had bony fractures in order to achieve perfect cosmetics one has to think about the lids lashes eyebrow skin soft tissue bone and face it's not just the eye or the socket so we don't uh, we not only have to think about surgery but ocular history we need colleagues in anaplastology and something called wise disguise which i shall discuss further we have already discussed the primary surgeries beautifully described by my senior colleagues uh, a few points which we don't tend to do here much like from whatever i have seen i'm pretty primitive that way but uh, ptosis collection of upper lid ptosis uh, along with the typical lower lid lag one might use like a switch where you take out the tarso conjunctiva from above shorten the upper lid and put it down as a graft and elevate the lower lid also so coral implants if you happen to use porous or coral implants you might consider drilling and shaving in case of implant exposure instead of just removing it out when it when you think it fails sometimes that helps one might consider wrapping pmma in vitrol that's one thing which we don't do typically as indians uh, but uh, it does help once in a while especially when we are considering uh, implant migrations and even exposures ethnic tarsography and mini tarsal strip well this diagram depicts dr ostriker's article on mini tarsal strip i worked with him last year and uh, instead of doing a full lateral cantho uh, uh, lateral cantoplasty what he does is just tucks the edge of the tarsus to the lateral canthus and reinforces the lateral lid during the surgery so that later on the chances of lower lid ectropia on and all is reduced so you're just tightening up the lateral uh, canthus a bit just to avoid further complications later on now step by coming to issues like you can see in this case lid problems this girl obviously needs like she's got a prosthetic eye in this right eye but she obviously needs something more than that to address this lid coloboma this is a tessier cleft lip deformity and here our issue is not just the eye but we have to take care of the entire face and reconstruct the lids before we actually try to put in prosthesis she initially just got one small custom conformer and like dr anand described beautifully we progressively try to expand that socket now this is like a typical scenario that comes back to you after a few years and you, as you can see the upper lid starts getting totic and the lower lid is also developing a shallowing and ectropion so here the tarsal lid switch resection this procedure really comes to our rescue where you can remove the upper part the tarso conjunctival part tighten the lid and the elevator tighten it up to get rid of the ptosis and put that graft in the lower lid and raise the lower lid or lengthen the lower lid and then give a lateral canthal tuck in whichever procedure you choose so that is one like two in one kind of a uh, thing and now coming to the eyebrows and eyelashes which are important we come back to this case which had obviously an eyebrow problem and this was actually a case of traumatic like a uh, dog bite and as you can see just putting an eye prosthetic eye or reconstructing the socket won't help you need to take care of the lashes here which are totally gone or discontinuous on the medial aspect so we have a lot of psychological options i don't know how many of my uh, female colleagues here know that uh, you have three different types of eyelashes one as a row one as an extension maybe we'll have a separate session on that later of the female 
and uh, you also have you can get eyebrows also which are according to your sex and your uh, color of your skin or color of your uh, hair and according to your age once in a while you might have a 60 year old and you really don't have to make him bushy eyed like this you can simply paint eyelashes you can uh, contact your anaplastologist and try to do that instead of sticking lashes then sometimes there are skin problems like this was a post irradiation case where you might uh, especially when you are considering anything like exenteration prosthesis you might have a problem achieving the correct skin tone so this is something which i found very interesting and i'm not sure how many of our anaplastologists in india are using this but this material is very much available from the same sources where rest of the silicon is ordered this is called flocking and this i actually did it in the lab there i used uh, some amount of yellow and some amount of red in the while mixing the silicon and what i get is this like you can see this yellowish red tinge you know these like these dots all over the skin okay uh, so this is the silicon uh, sample that i've made and it was supposed to match my skin and this is actually uh, in a clear plastic that i have a thin layer and just watch this i kept it on my forearm okay and i've taken this photo so what even i was pretty surprised that even my arm looks like that i'm i don't think i'm that old but you know that's how our skin looks it does show some amount of capillaries and all and when we typically go for the uh, exenteration prosthesis without all this flocking inside the prosthesis looks pretty dull and dead you might get the correct skin tone you know color wise you know how fair or how dark but you don't get this live look especially in old patients where the veins are showing you might want to use some amount of green flocking and the procedure is not different i worked with daphne she is the one who taught me she is the anaplastologist at princess margaret and her patient is wearing actually a right uh, exenteration prosthesis so um, it's not just about skin color it's about these subtle things which gives a real uh, lively look to the eye or to the prosthesis and we've already discussed the various options and vikas also talked about fillers which even we find very useful and sometimes uh, you might have to do something called wise disguise you know the conventional techniques of doing a surgery expanding and doing all that might not work like in this case of uh, uh, irradiated rb who really came in late this was the best we could get so sometimes we feel that maybe we might offer an exenteration prosthesis or something else so why this guys could be uh, like they say cosmetic spectacles tinted glasses now these are photos from the internet because my patients who use these techniques had uh, privacy issues so i couldn't use their photographs i'm sorry and this is exactly what we advise and that's what the patients do where you have a hairstyle which closes covers one eye at least ladies can very well do that and some um, wide uh, uh, sunglasses and you also have options like silicon fillers makeup and sometimes like i said exenteration prosthesis in case of severe socket contraction instead of going through all that surgery another point about symmetry sometimes you might not want to match the fellow eye like this lady already had this um, in her normal seeing eye she has this inferior um, scar on the cornea and uh, it it really depends on the patient so it's a good idea to ask we had one patient who wanted a similar looking other eye so we actually made a coloboma and a scar over there and this one wanted her uh, artificial eye to look normal so we kind of went with her and uh, like i said in a 60 or a 70 year old with very less eyelashes no need of really putting the hair in there you can just paint it with black paint and pigment and it works pretty well coming to recent advances uh, this is a really nice paper which made me think uh, from a european group and here this patient had this huge orbital defect after cancer surgery and he was not happy with his prosthesis which was a staring sort he had an exenteration prosthesis which stared so what they did was they made a closed orbital prosthesis closed eye prosthesis and the patient was very happy because he said that it's easier to tell people that okay i have like a third nerve palsy or my lids don't go up rather than having an obviously staring eye which looks really abnormal so these are the kind of things we might want to think in wise disguise also 
we have good techniques now to take care of uh, the exact contour of the face before going in for surgery often what we do over there is take a 3d scanning of the face before the patient actually undergoes the surgery to remove the tumor or whatever so that later on the reconstruction is good and yeah we can also now boast about stem cells that's a new thing that has come up uh, by nation group and uh, th that's also very interesting however they've just done it in um, neurine models so far so i would summarize saying that uh, fitting a prosthesis is not enough perfect cosmesis includes restoration of skin eyebrow eyelashes periocular soft tissue you must try to symmetrize with the other eye and avoid undue attention to the artificial eye one might have to use a wise disguise and to conclude uh, obviously customized processes is the best way to go thank you so much